Welcome to the Loose Training Podcast. I'm Tyler Martin Olich, Film Commissioner for Hillsborough County, and to my right is Jesse Brock. Hey Jesse. Hi. Welcome back to another episode. Welcome back. How are you? I'm great. <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, to dive into the world of hair and makeup. No, so am I, because I clearly need a lot of help. <laughs> I know, when I brought um, up that we were going to do a hair and makeup artist, Tyler was like, how am I going to ask questions <laughs> to a hair and makeup artist? And I was like, you yeah, know. I, I know nothing. Like, I'm the guy who uses Dove soap in the shower, and that is it. Yeah, but what is revealed in this conversation is that the hair and makeup person, a lot of like behind the scenes stuff that you find from like Iron Man or any big movie, it's always in the hair and makeup chair. They're always having a conversation or laughing. That's where, or... where they spill the tea every exactly. morning. Exactly. Imagine how much tea the hair and makeup person has on every set. Uh, it's very true. They are the uh, the keeper of secrets on any film set. Yeah. Um, but um, I... what Natalia, um, who we're interviewing, Natalia Villafon Alpizar, She's originally from Trinidad, so she has a wonderful name, a gorgeous name. Um, what she does and what she kind of explained is that they sit down in her chair and then they transform into character. And whether that special effects taken nine hours or a beauty makeup taken one hour, I mean, they walk in one person and then leave her chair the next. So, yeah, I think I bring this up in the podcast. I mean, other than the driver for the talent, the first person most talent or actors interact with and the last person they typically interact with is the hair and makeup artists, right? Mm -hmm. They're they're going into their trailer, they're just woken up, they've got a 14 hour day ahead of them, you know, that sets the mood for the entire day. And she has, you can tell when you talk to her that she has the passion and um, drive and she's very proud of what she does. and. She is the perfect person to do that. She talks to you. She makes you feel valued and important. And what better way to start your day on set? Yeah, you should take some lessons because I never feel valued when I'm talking to you. I just want you to know that. I like, think that's more of a personal. <laughs> I think you need a therapist for that. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I'm cut out for that. I do not pay you enough to be my therapist uh, or to deal with half my problems. Uh, but with that, we're going to switch over to our wonderful interview. So we'll be right back after the break. Last looks. Welcome back to Loose Friday Podcast. I'm Tyler Martin Olich, and joining me now is my guest, Natalia Villafon Alpazar. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I thank you for being here. Uh, let's be honest, no one's going to look at me and say, this guy knows a lot about makeup. So this is way outside of my, my normal comfort zone as, as far as interacting with crew members. But I'm interested in knowing a little bit more about what you do and your experiences on set. But let's let's start this off properly. How did you get in to hair and makeup? Oh, wow. Great question. I got into hair and makeup um, just random. It was just one of those random things that happened where I had a friend and she wanted me to do her hair and makeup. And of course, I was like, no, I don't know how to do that stuff. I'm not good at it. She said, oh, go ahead and still do it. And I did her hair and makeup and she loved it, got compliments on it. And it just started progressing from there where other people wanted me to do their hair and makeup and Eventually, I was like, I think I'm really good at this stuff. Maybe I should pursue it some more. Yeah, and and that's how it actually. And, and did that translate into to working in beauty salons or yeah, it's actually counters? yeah, actually, crazy crazy story. I actually went to school to be a doctor. <laughs> I wanted to be called uh, Doctor Villafon. I I just envisioned this telescope around my neck and lab coat, and people say Doctor Villafana, Doctor Villafana, paging Doctor Villafana, and sure enough. That was my thing. But when I started having that feeling like I really like doing makeup, this makes me happy. Yeah. Maybe I should look into it some more. I in turn went to beauty school, which my mom hated. She was like, yeah, medical school, beauty school, are you serious? But I'm so happy I made a decision because after going to beauty school and then eventually opening up my own hair salon and then owning my own hair salon for over 15 years and then meeting the people that I met that in turn got me into the film industry. It was like the greatest decision I've ever made. Yeah. And, you know, running a, a hair salon, that's like a, a, well, it is a small business. I mean, yes. that's difficult yes. in and of itself. But then translating your skill sets and breaking into the film industry, mm -hmm. you know, just knowing what I know about the film industry these days, mm -hmm. that's even harder. So yes. how did you actually break yeah. into the film industry? What was your first shot? Oh, wow. Um, I was probably say 
you know, going from doing hair and makeup for fashion shows and then meeting the people I met and then it just so happened someone was like, you know what? I think you probably will do really, really good in the film industry. You should probably fly here to Florida and do a couple of things. And I was like, mm, I don't think I'm good at that. What does it, what does it involve, you know? And when I came to Florida, um, my first actual shoot was a commercial and this was for HSN and I loved it so much. And they was like, you know what, we'll call you back. And it just took off from there. So where were you at prior to, to moving to Florida? I was actually living in Michigan. Michigan. I I'm love also Michigan. from Michigan. Really? Yeah. Lansing, Michigan. <laughs> All right. I, I was from Rochester. Oh, okay. So, uh, and I lived in Troy for a little bit. Yeah, yeah, Oliver. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know the cold. I do know the cold. You know and the, the snow. Miserable, miserable snow oh, and the yeah. gray clouds. So yeah. I don't have to ask you why you came to Florida. It's obvious right, right, because you lived in Michigan. Yeah. Um, right, right. So, you know, you mentioned working for HSN and, mm -hmm. and for people who are listening, you might not know. Mm -hmm. HSN is headquartered out of, of Tampa Bay. Correct. Um, and it has launched so many careers because yes. they're constantly shooting. I mean, they have correct, at one correct. point, I think they had seven stages running 24 hours a day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what was it like working under the, the pressure of live TV like that? Oh, wow. I mean, it was amazing. Um, it challenged me. And, and not just HSN, I worked for other small companies as well. And just the overall experience as far as the challenge that came with it was amazing. Um, I'm just gonna add, working in the hair salon, I think helped me with my speed. It helped me with my craft because in the industry, in the film industry, you have to be fast yeah. with what you do because time is of essence. If the director, producer say, okay, how much long do, longer do you have on this talent? You, you wanna be able to look at them and say, Ah, they'll be done in 15 minutes and be done in 15 minutes, you know? And yeah. I, I also have to imagine <laughs> owning a salon and having, you know, regular clients and new clients coming in allowed you to be comfortable in the moment and, and just conversing and, yes, and giving a person a, you know, a sense of peace while yeah. they're, they're getting the makeup done. Yeah, actually that's one of the, the best thing I love about working with people, whether it be when I was in the, in the salon industry and now in the film industry, just the personalities you get to interact with, the stories you get to hear, and also the fact that you become their confidant in such, in, in a way, like a talent sits in your chair and they're getting ready to perform. And just for just a little moment, they have a, a, a moment of clarity where they can just relax get their makeup done, talk about their day, what they did yesterday, or, or maybe go over their lines and, and ask you, how does that sound? Did that sound right? And you able to respond to them like, yeah, that was good. You're yeah. good, you got this, you know, but that, you know. That's so true, I mean, there's so much pressure on a film set. And when you think of talent, other than perhaps maybe the driver getting them from point A to point B, hair and makeup is their first and last stop every very day. True. That's very That true. sets the tone and the atmosphere for the entire day. Very true, very true. So give us your, your first, not for HSM, but your first time on an actual indie feature. What was that like? Oh man, my first indie feature was amazing. Um, how everything was just flowing the pace that you have to, you know, you have this person getting that set up with, with, with the cameras and then the lighting and then, and then you're in the back trying, you know, getting the talent ready, hair and makeup for, you know, their role. And you're like, man, everything is going so fast. Let's, let's do this. You know, it's just the energy was just absolutely amazing. Yeah. What, what do you I was scared. I would tell you that I was very, very scared <laughs> because, you know, it's different for, you know, from being, uh, what, let's just say a quick commercial. Yeah. This was actually time was as of is of the essence. So you have to make sure they get out there. Yeah, you don't have time right. to screw around at all, right? Not only that, you have to make sure that you do exactly what the director or producer had envisioned this character to look like. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and I guess there's the, also the consistency of it too, right? I mean, exactly. a feature. You know, you might be going back to a scene that you shot three days ago yes, uh, and having definitely. to match that makeup. Whereas I yeah. think, you know, commercial, you're, you're in and out in a day, maybe two days. Very true. Very true. And I think it's 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 great. It's challenging. And at the same time, you're like, oh, man, did she have a mole on the right or the left? And then you have to flip through your pictures that you took three days ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on the left, yeah. you know, and making sure everything matches, like you said, how she was three days ago. So what is the, your, your favorite thing about doing what you do? My favorite thing um, would be actually being on set, you know, behind a director, looking at the camera, seeing what the camera sees and making sure they look exactly how they're supposed to look. Yeah, That's the, my favorite part. 
And then also calling last looks. I love that. I love saying last looks, even though I didn't really need to. <laughs> do that. You know, but anyway, going up and making sure the hair is in place or um, if the ponytail was on the right, the last shot, and then it moved to the left, going back and putting the ponytail back on the right yeah. to make sure everything is, you know, continuity purposes. Yeah, and setting everything constantly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is the most difficult aspect of your job? Wow. The most difficult aspect of my job, I wouldn't say difficult would be the word. Again, I would call it a challenge because I love being challenged. If, if, if I'm put into a situation where I have to do something I've never done before, I will try my best to figure it out. How can I do this? I've yeah. never done this before, but how can I do this and make it work? Yeah, I mean, I think everyone in the film industry at one point or not has faked it till they make it, right? Like Pretty you're much. sitting there scrolling through your, your phone oh, yeah. really quick, oh, yeah, trying to yeah, Google yeah, something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no very, matter what very, your very position true. is. Very, it's so funny because I remember I did a, uh, a short film and I got hired to do hair and makeup, basic hair and makeup, and I did that. And at some point, I guess they tweaked certain lines in the script and then the director came to me and he's like, so uh, Natalia, uh, can you uh, do a, a, a couple scars on, 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 on his cheek? And I remembered, I was like, oh, I don't know how to do scars, but I didn't tell him that. Yeah. And I kid you not, I went on Google and I was like, scars, <laughs> what do scars look like? How am I gonna do this? I was like, ah, that's how you do it. And I remembered I did it and the director was like, man, that looks good. I was like, oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, that's so true. I like that you brought up, uh, you know, going on social media or, you know, just Google to, to find the information. <laughs> you know, it, we're in a different generation now yes. uh, where it's all social media. We're, we're live streaming our, our, our days and there's so much help out there. Tutorials. Yeah. I think it's sort of the golden age for people who are wanting to get into makeup. Very true. Um, do you find social media a good outlet for your own skill sets to help oh, promote definitely, yourself? Oh, definitely. Definitely. It's a great outlet, actually. Um, showcasing my work, showing people like what I can do. Um, also, inspiring other up and coming artists. It's so crazy because um, I went to Mac to get some makeup and there was two girls behind the counter and they were like, oh, what makeup are you looking for? I told them what I was looking for. Then they wanted to know what I, what I did. And I was like, well, I'm a hair makeup artist in the film industry. And I was like, oh man, that's amazing. I wanna do that. What's your social media? So I gave them my Instagram and they started following me, but every now and again, they'd send me a message saying, hey, can I be in the next set just to shadow you? So having that social media outlet to showcase your work and what you're doing, what movie you're on, helps so much and it encourages others who wants to get into the same industry. Yeah, you know, looking back over the, I mean, I don't wanna go too far back, but let's say just the last 50 years, yeah. uh, I think hair and makeup, script supervisor, like there was roles on film sets that seemed to be like a natural path for for women to go into. Okay. Um, but do you find, as long as you've been working in, in film industry now, yeah. has that broadened? Do you, do, you, do you see more women on film sets oh, now and more diverse roles? Oh, definitely. I mean, a uh, good friend of mine, she, boom, she, you know, sound woman, and, and I'm like, she's amazing. Love her. I mean, I see scriptees. I see camera camera women. I mean, cam women who are actually operating the camera and yeah. producers, directors, and calling the shots. I absolutely love it. So it has definitely grown tremendously, and it just keeps growing. Yeah. And do you do you feel? I mean, I don't want to put too much on your shoulders, but do you yeah. feel a sense of responsibility when you go on a film set to show that you know women can do this and they oh, should definitely. be here? I I I, I do feel some sort of sense of responsibility in the sense that um, you want to show that, okay, I can be professional. Um, I'm very good at what I do. I have the skill set to do what I do. But at the same time, I'm bringing, you know, what I have, you know, to this film or to this crew. And it's a good thing. <laughs> no, it really is. I mean, for so long, film was just such yeah, a, yeah, 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 a yeah, yeah, boys yeah. club, right? Right, uh, exactly. I, I love that that is sort of breaking apart right, and right, you're getting right. more creative people exactly. coming on. But you can also be fun with what you do. Yeah. So you're showing people I can be fun. I mean, with what I do, I'm going to do this work, you know, make this talent look the way they're supposed to look. And on break time, whatever, we can still joke around, have fun, talk sci-fi. love sci-fi. Sorry. You know what I mean? Talk aliens, talk whatever it is, you know, and still be personable. Yeah. You know, be professional and yeah. So give me, it doesn't have to be your favorite memory, but a favorite memory yeah. of being on a set? Favorite memory of being on set. Oh, there's so many, so many. 
Favorite memory being on set would be um, a full feature I was on and uh, not during the shoot, but after the shoot on break time, everyone got together. You didn't see anyone like one person over there, one person over there. Everyone actually gathered around in around a table and we were all eating, looking at each other. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Are you tired yet? I'm oh, not that tired. It's been about 14 hours. You sure you're good? I'm like, yeah, I'm good, you know? But everyone having the same feeling, mentality, but still coming together. And no one complained because everyone loved this. this, this we love what we do. Yeah. And that made me feel really good. And I was like, ah, I love this. Yeah. I love this. Yeah, that's interesting you bring that up because, I mean, it is like a, a family that's knit together very quickly. Yeah. But they're all working towards the same goal. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like Saint, a Thanksgiving dinner, except no one's talking politics and they're yeah. all trying to yeah, get yeah, along. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. Where has the, the industry changed since from, well, from the, the time you started to now, like, mm -hmm. has there been any shifts in your own profession that has made makeup easier or more mm -hmm. interesting for you? Mm -hmm. Like how has it evolved? Um, it has evolved um, from what I've seen, diversity. I mean, I'm seeing a lot more women of color actually um, on set a lot more women of color, um, just all people of color, I should say, from different um, backgrounds on set, whereas before I really didn't see it as much. Yeah. Maybe it's because they weren't sure, you know, but now they're taking chances and they're seeing, oh, wow, I can do this too. I mean, my background has nothing to do with it. My skill is what matters, Yeah. you know? What are some, well, and let's couch this in, maybe advice to someone breaking into the, the hair and makeup scene on, on mm -hmm. film sets. What are the, the, the wrong ways to approach skin tone? Because I hear that a lot, you know, mm -hmm. just DPs don't know how to light for it. Yeah. Makeup artists don't know how to uh, apply the makeup in the correct way that enhances their beauty. And, and yeah. they always try to go darker for some reason. Right, right. How do you how do you fix that? What advice would you give? Ah, good question, too. Man, you got some good questions. <laughs> I um, <wanted> to. <laughs> as far as um, matching the skin tone, that comes from practice, I guess. Um, you know, off off camera, I mean, on your own, at home, with a friend, um, various skin tones, practicing, and then you get good at it. Um, you just don't throw a dark color on someone who's dark complected, you know? Um, you have color palettes that you go by. So make sure before you even start, make sure those that color matches. You know, do different, use different swatches and see, okay, this is the shade that looks best with her. Make sure it matches her neck too. The neck, the hands, all of that matters. Yeah. Because you don't want to have a, a darker complexion <laughs> and then a light neck or vice versa, you know? Yeah. It wouldn't look good on camera at all. So, and blending it in, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it also goes for, for hair texture as well. I mean, would you yes. recommend that any makeup artist really stretch their skill sets and, and challenge themselves? Definitely. I think that's a big thing. You have to challenge yourself because you can't stay in this bubble. You can't stay with, oh, okay, this is all I do. I only do this particular hair type, and I'm going to look for a job that only hires me to do this particular hair, hair type. Definitely step outside the box, get outside of that bubble, and experiment. I mean, you'd be surprised with what you find. You might actually find that, oh, my goodness, I actually like doing this type of hair. Oh, I didn't even know I can braid. Wow, this is a good braid, you know? So yeah. definitely stepping outside. And, and you don't just do, do beauty makeup. You also do uh, effects makeup and appliance makeup. Yes. How, did, how did you learn that skill set? Oh, this was just something I just started doing at the house, in my home. I was like, I'm going to experiment with this stuff. I have no idea what I'm doing, but I'm going to buy this wax, and I'm going to buy this, you know, prosthetic, and I'm going to try to apply it on my hand <laughs> and see how I'm going to work it. And, yeah. and, and it started off like that. But, of course, taking classes here and there to get, you know, get better at it. But, yeah. And is that something you, you like to do more than, than beauty makeup now? Maybe yeah. I, I would assume it's probably more I, challenging. It is more challenging. I love beauty makeup, don't get me wrong, but I really like special effects makeup. I like the blood and the gore. Yeah. That's just my thing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the wounds and the cuts and the bruises and the, all of that stuff. Yeah. It just gets me going. I just, because it's different. You know what I mean? It's different from what I'm used to doing. Sure. And it's very challenging. And I'm like, hmm, how can I make this look much more realistic? Yeah. And being as diverse as you are in your, your skill set, is there a yes. particular genre that if you had to, to pick, like, I want to yeah. do a horror movie, or I want to do a sci-fi movie, yes, yes, like, what yes. would you actually choose? Oh, man. You just said two of my favorite. <laughs> horror and sci-fi. Yeah. I haven't done a sci-fi film yet, yeah. so I'm waiting. Hello? 
Hire me. Uh, anyone needs an <laughs> alien out there. We're there ready you to go. go. Exactly. Exactly. That's awesome. So who were your inspirations growing up? Oh, was there a makeup artist or someone that just inspired you? Oh, man. Um, it had to be a makeup artist. Maybe it was yeah, a yeah, yeah. favorite teacher or someone that just said, you know, do what makes you happy. Because right, going right, from right. I want to be a doctor to a makeup artist. Right. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very true. Yeah. Um, there was no particular person that inspired me. I would say just watching watching different movies and different television shows and and seeing how the makeup was done especially you know in horror films and and sci-fi i was i was always drawn to that i'm like how do they do that i want to learn how to do that you know and what is um prop prop guy i think is prop master prop master prop master and a really really good special effects makeup artist i would always go on their page and see what they do and and wanting to be like them yeah and it was quite a bit of them you know so so there's no individual (laughs) i just love them all so and Going on to your, your, your first couple of, of film sets, mm-hmm. were, you, were you scared or were you confident? Because you'd run a business. Oh, man. I was scared because I didn't know what to expect. It was my first time. Um, but when I got there and meeting people and, and, and just saying, okay, I'm good at this. I can do this. Don't be scared. Just, just do what you're good at. Um, after I did that, I said, you know, this, this is not as bad as I thought. It was just all in my head, yeah. you know? And then when, when you, especially when you have the producer or director saying, wow, that looks great. It just builds up your confidence even more like, huh, thank you. You know, I yeah. can, I can keep doing this, you know? Yeah. I'm not a sound guy, but the first thing that will irk me when I'm watching a short film or a, a movie of any sort is yeah. bad sound. Like it, it just stands out like a, yeah. a sort yeah, of yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that the same for you? I mean, do oh, you yeah. watch a movie and say, oh, oh that is just terrible makeup? That's the worst for me. I, it's so hard for me to watch a film and not watch and oh, critique what I see. If I watch a film, I'm like, oh, I just can't watch this film because look at the makeup. It's horrible. Look at the hair. Why did they put that wig on her? Or, or, or why did they do that? You know, so it's, oh my God, I see everything. Yeah. Which is a bad thing I, because I can't enjoy the movie. Yeah, I, I, keep I have been really enjoying The Witcher with Henry Cavill, but that first season, man, that was the worst wig I have ever seen oh in my, my. life. <laughs> uh, it was embarrassing. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, are there yeah. consistent problems you see with makeup when you're watching a movie? Like what are the pitfalls that somehow just keeps happening over and over again? Hair. Hair. It's the worst. I get, it's just hair. It's just, they just doesn't, it, it doesn't come across as being realistic. You know, you can actually see where the band is or you can see, it's always something to me that I, you know, I, I pick out, I'm like, oh, they could have laid that down a little bit better. Yeah. You know? Oh, why do they have his hair looking like, like, like he has a bowl on his head, you know? Yeah, I don't have any hair, so <laughs> I don't have a lot to compare. Right, right, um, right. Is there a particular makeup that you like to use or a product that is your go-to? Oh man, I have a variety of products. I mean, from store-bought products to high-end products. From, to me, I mean, for me, you know, when I'm working with the talent, it's all about the results. Can I get this result using this product, yeah. you know? And once I get that result, well, there it is, you know? Yeah. Where do you want to be? I don't, that's a terrible question, you know, yeah, like yeah, as yeah. an interview question, but like, what's the next level for you? Like, what is the next thing you want to learn and be proficient at? <clears throat> oh, the next thing I would love to learn would be like full face prosthetics, body application, you know what I mean? Yeah. As far as um, how to apply it on the hand and make it look so realistic so that if there's movement, you don't see where it was applied. And the neck area, if yeah. they move, you don't want to see where it was applied. So, you know, that's my next thing is diving into- So you can do that alien into- movie someday. I, no, I totally get where you're going. <laughs> um, what is, and let's, because selfishly, I'm the film commissioner of Hillsborough County. Let's yeah. talk about Tampa Bay. Okay. Um, you grew up in Michigan, or you at least were living in Michigan prior to, to moving to Florida. Mm-hmm. Now you're in the Tampa Bay area. What's it like living here? Oh, I absolutely love it. I'm going to rewind. So I'm originally from the Caribbean, from Trinidad. And in the islands, I mean, the weather's always warm. You have the sand, you have the beach, you have great weather. And then from the islands, I moved to New York and then Michigan. So it was just cold and cold and cold. and Cold and colder. Cold and cold, exactly. And then all of a sudden I moved to Florida and I was like, oh my goodness, why didn't I do this before? Home. Or yeah, exactly. Closer. I was like, why didn't I do this before? It reminds me so much of back home. And I love that feeling, that warmth that I get, you know, living here in Florida. You know, it's like I have a taste of home, 
but with all the amenities of living in Florida, you yeah. know? So, yeah. A lot of people think, you know, they graduate film school or maybe they they just want to go into the film industry. I've got to move yeah. to, f- you know, New York or I've got to be in yeah. Chicago yeah, or, yeah. or L.A. Or, or these days, I guess, Atlanta or, or Louisiana. Do you find that there's enough opportunities for oh, yeah. someone wanting to break into the film industry in yeah. Florida? Oh, there's a lot of opportunities here in Florida, a lot. I mean, come on, you can have a vacation in your backyard and also work in your backyard, yeah. you know? So, I mean, it's there's a lot of opportunity. You just have to give it a chance, you know? Google jobs and, you know, film jobs in Florida, and you would see, like, lists and lists and lists of, of all kinds of jobs. Depending on what it is you, you want to do, they're there. You just have to look. Yeah. Uh, is there a particular, I don't want to say genre, but is there a particular type of filming that you, you find more readily available here in the Bay Area than others? I mean, you've got, I don't want to be mm-hmm. pedantic, but like yeah, Screen yeah, and yeah. Cell, HSN, right, commercials, right, right. fashion shoots, yeah, feature yeah, films. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. where, where do you find yourself getting hired the most? I'm hired the most in short films. Mm-hmm. Definitely short films, um, a couple features, and a lot of commercials. A lot of commercials because, I mean, you have the beach, you have the beautiful weather. Um, a lot of product companies want to have this, this stuff shot where it's nice and sunny and beautiful atmosphere. And, you know, so I see that quite a bit. Yeah. Um, in regards to film, I mean, you have the, the water. If you want to have something shot on the beach, you have trees, a whole bunch of trees if you want to have the woodsy effect. We even have a swamp if you want to swamp. Yeah. <laughs> you I want don't to be sell swamp, the swamp very often. If you want to be surrounded swamp, yeah. by, you know, the whole like that effect for whatever movie that you're, you're doing. Yeah. But we have a variety of different locations and spots that you can shoot anything that you want to do. But I would say a lot of commercials are shot here as well. You know? yeah. uh, do you think Tampa Bay area or let's just say Florida is going to be your, your home for the long term or oh, yeah, I'm here. maybe go back to the islands or I'm where, here. What, you're here. I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to go back home. No. <laughs> hey, this is home. Yeah. Right. Now, right. Yeah. I'm here to stay. If you had your own personal project you wanted uh-huh. to, to, to make, what would that be? I mean, oh. If you, you had your own story to tell. My own story to tell. Hmm. Well, since you asked, I do a little bit of writing at the side. So I have all these different ideas of films that I can possibly make. And every last one of them have to do with something (laughs) (laughs) sci-fi. So if 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 it was up to me or someone sits in front of me and hey, Natalia, so um, this is the budget and you can make anything that you want to make. What do you want to do? I'm like, hey, yeah, this sci-fi movie or that sci-fi movie, you know? (laughs) And would you be the makeup artist even though it was your own story? You still I don't want to think, do it? Mm, no, you want to sit yeah, in the director's chair? Exactly. I want to have that feeling to sit in the director's chair. I'm like, okay, action. <laughs> <laughs> I just do what other people tell me. I, I don't tell anyone what to do. So I'm curious, has there ever been a, a performance or a movie, not necessarily the actor, but just the the makeup and the style that mm-hmm. really inspired you? Like, wow, this is what people can do and transform yeah, 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 with makeup. Yeah. Oh, man, one of my favorites would be Cloud Atlas. The, the Wachowski oh, brothers film. yeah. I mean, the makeup was amazing how they can. I mean, they were jumping back in time, different periods. And then the characters was changing with that. I mean, yeah. and it was and Halle even Berry and Tom Halle Hanks, Berry, right? Tom yeah. Hanks. Exactly. And it wasn't just time. It was also age, age and race. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was just absolutely amazing. I mean, I admired the artist, the makeup artist, the hairstylist that worked on that film so much. Being able to switch. You know yeah. what I mean? I actually think that was probably the most impressive part of that movie. Yeah, 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 exactly. I, I, there were some times where I was like, wait a minute, is that is that Tom Hanks? That's Tom Hanks! Because they added the prosthetic nose, or they made him look aged. Even Holly Berry. I was like, wait, is Holly Berry a white woman? Yeah, <laughs> she is! Yeah. Man, it looks good, you know? <laughs> They're both super iconic actors. Exactly. So the fact that they yeah. can sort of disappear in their makeup is, yeah. is really yeah. a testament yeah. to the makeup artist. I love artist. it. I absolutely love it, yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what is just some basic advice you'd give someone who is interested in going into this business? Um, my, I would advise them to definitely um, improve on your skills. You know, make sure that um, you're really good at what you do um, when you're not on set, so that when you're on set, you're confident enough that whatever they throw at you, you can do. Yeah. Period. You know what I mean? Um, and educate yourself. That's the big thing. Definitely. Keep educating yourself on different skin tones, different skin types, different hair types, you know, and the more you do that, the better that you the better you get. Um, also, being a people person, having good communication skills, all of those are so important because once that talent sits in your chair, you want to be able to talk to them and make them feel comfortable that they're like, oh, OK, 
She knows what she's doing. And also she's funny, you know? Hey, and I have to imagine whether it's, you know, a DP or a production designer or a hair and makeup artist, mm -hmm. documenting what you've done is yes. probably more important than your quote unquote resume, right? That is your Very resume. True. So Very true, yes. would you recommend people constantly be taking photos of yes, their work and definitely. posting it and keeping an archive? I think that is so important. You have to keep doing that because see, and not only just keeping track of what you've done, but also once you take that picture, you can look back at the picture and say, okay, where did I go wrong? Yeah. What kind of, what, what could I have improved on? And then go from there. Yeah. But definitely. And, and yeah, I think a lot of people are guilty of only posting their successes yes. on yeah. on social media, right? Yeah, this is yeah, the best picture true. I've ever taken. It that's looks so amazing. That's true. That's true. But would you challenge people to, to post their mediocre stuff too? Because yeah. the feedback is also important mm -hmm. as long as you're yeah. willing to learn from it. Very true. Very true. I mean, a lot of people see the thing about, you know, in the makeup world, I haven't seen anyone post anything that they've done that they're not proud of because it's kind of like you want to showcase your best work. Yeah. Um, even though sometimes you do post your best work and you still get criticized, sure. you know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, posting your the work that you're not comfortable posting. Mm, I don't know. That's a, that's, that's a little tricky. Cause yeah. I mean, I would say I'm, I'm one to blame. I wouldn't post anything that I'm like, ah, this, this is crap. I'm not going to put it up there, you know? Yeah. Well, then do you have a safety net of people that you are comfortable with showing That's things right. to get their feedback? So I was going to add that. So if you do, if you create a makeup look or hairstyle and you're not as confident, you know, from what you did, show your friends, show your family members and they'll tell you the truth. They'll say, oh yeah, that, that, that didn't blend right. Or the, her hair doesn't look right. You, 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 something is wrong with that. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. And you get that positive criticism to help you improve your work. Um, don't just throw it out there. Yeah. Do you think it's uh, <laughs> valuable for someone who's probably gone to, to beauty school, but then to take classes and, and mm -hmm. avail themselves of other teaching and learning opportunities about oh, yeah. makeup? Oh, yeah, definitely. You have to keep educating yourself. Don't ever stop. Because once you stop, what, what happens is that you're putting yourself in that bubble. You know what I mean? You're putting yourself in that box as to, this is all I do. This is all I know. And you're limiting yourself. So by you continuously going out there and educating yourself, whether it's about the latest makeup product and then the latest makeup application, whether it be, oh, you know, they're no longer doing skinny eyebrows, they're doing thick eyebrows. Oh, okay, let me educate myself on how to do that. Yeah. It just it just betters yourself as an artist. And, you know, it, it definitely um, puts yourself out there, more hireable, I should say, yeah. you know what I mean, for the industry. Uh, do you have any upcoming projects you're working on right now? I do. There Actually, there is a television series I'm working on, been working on. It's a Christian te uh, children's television series, which is absolutely amazing. Working with kids, you know? <laughs> I actually really like working with kids, you Fantastic. know? Fantastic. Not do. a lot of people do. So. Yeah, no, right, right, yeah. <laughs> it takes really a certain like... <laughs> personality to be able to deal I really, with that I really, really like I can I can deal with it, you know? Um, I have that, and then I have a full feature coming up. Awesome. In the next couple months, you know? A scary horror along, along my lines, you know? So I'm really looking forward to those things. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, unfortunately, we're running out of time, so we got to wrap yeah. this up. Mm -hmm. If someone wants to, to hire you or, or learn more about you, where can mm -hmm. they go? Oh, they can go to my website, which is nataliavalpazar.com. My Instagram, which is Natalia V. Um, oh, I can't even remember my own Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> embarrassing. Envy. Okay. Envy underscore the artist. There we go. Right, let's say it one more time. So it's Envy underscore the artist All right. on Instagram. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I know nothing about makeup. I don't know if I know much more about makeup, but I'm confident you can make me look pretty if I needed to. Okay. Um, and I definitely need the help. Oh, my goodness. Uh, thanks for sitting with us. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And for those watching, we'll be right back. Great. And welcome back. Have you ever notice I always point at the camera? Yeah. It's like that was pointed out to us by our editor. Like, your, why do I do that? I don't know. It's a gimmick. It's my gimmick. <laughs> but it's consistent every time. Don't stop. I'm not stopping. That's my, <laughs> my thing now. I love it. You command the room. I Well, it's easy when there's no one else around. So <laughs> what did you think of the interview? I loved it. I loved it. I love the conversation you two had. She's just, she is a spitfire and she is so bright and smart and funny. 
Yeah. Uh, it was a struggle for me. I'll be perfectly honest. Like, I was going into this this morning. Couldn't tell. Dreading, like, what do I ask? What do I talk about? I was watching some, like, hair and makeup interviews I could find on YouTube. I was like, I don't know any of these things. Like, they're swapping makeup tips. Like, I'm the dude who uses Dove soap. Like, that's it. Right. Like, that's my entire well, beauty um, routine in the morning. It's become kind of such a cultural phenomenon, especially with Gen Z. Uh, my little sister um, is 17, so we're obviously different generations, but... I was in middle school and high school doing the blue eyeshadow thing. <laughs> like I knew nothing about makeup, but she knows how to do a full face. She knows how to do contour. And I'm just like, YouTube's great. <laughs> I, I clearly, my algorithms do not pop up with makeup <laughs> tutorials because I don't see these things. Um, but if we veer away from kind of, uh, you know, there's beauty makeup and then there's special effects yeah. and we kind of dove into both of those things. Her favorite genre being sci-fi. I mean... So I was actually kind of surprised that her favorite genre was uh, was sci-fi, but that actually makes sense because she's so into special effects and mm -hmm. appliance makeup. Right, uh, and that presents a new challenge for her too. Yeah, I mean that's not just beauty makeup. Not saying anything bad about beauty makeup. That's its own skill set, but special effects is full body. Yeah, and it's seamless. Well, and she she brought up her, her favorite movie as far as makeup effects go was Cloud Atlas, which it was a bit controversial. But you had Tom Hanks and uh, and Halle Berry, right? And they literally switch age, they switch genders, they switch race throughout the movie. Um, and now that I think about it, I've only seen the movie once, but the, there's points in that movie where you cannot tell that that's Halle Berry. Right, right. Um, Halle Berry, as far as special effects, was her favorite performance. But then I love the question about um, who's your favorite actor or actress that you almost kind of like love their style and you emulate. And her answer was Kate Beckinsale. And uh, for me personally, I have those I have those performances too, I'll be honest. Um, Catherine Heigl in 27 Dresses, I totally stole her look for a while. Um, Anne Hathaway in The Devil Wears Prada, fashion icon obviously Meryl Streep steals the show in that but her long leather jacket and the bangs I cut bangs because of her <laughs> don't do that by yourself hire someone to cut your bangs um and another one was Jennifer Aniston and along came Polly I just loved her waves and I loved her just her whole personality and that was very quirky so out of three movies you mentioned I have not seen any of those films <laughs> Well, that's because that's me and that's personal to me. And I loved their looks in those movies and I wanted to look like them, but I want to know, I mean, I know you're a fan of, you know, specific hearty men, like boots on the ground. Like you have the entire collection of tombstone Funko pops and that is a vibe. And I, I just, I, I do. I, I wanted I, to know, is there, um, there was like, like a, a Kurt trend Russell on, out on there. Twitter recently where you were supposed to like retweet a gif of the movie you've seen more than 10 times and I was thinking like oh, how many times have I actually seen Tombstone it's easily over 500 times I easily I, I believe it I believe it. it's so quotable it's such a good movie but yeah. I digress um what we're talking about is the look and the feel and like well that's Tom, part of it I like Tom the swagger Selleck. in it I I'm a huge Tom Selleck fan uh people who know me well knows that I have a giant yeah <laughs> blow up photo <laughs> of Tom Selleck uh, in the shortest shorts known to man. Dub uh, shorts. <laughs> and I don't know if it was like a, a publicity photo they did for Magnum PI or what, but I found it in a thrift store and I bought this thing and then I tracked him down and got him to sign it, uh, which was probably the most embarrassing thing he's ever signed because this is not a good photo. By but he means. did it. He and did that's it. That's a testament to it him is. as a man. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. I like the swagger of it. You know, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a What it's speaks a look. to you, you know? Well, not the short shorts. I don't think I could pull those <laughs> off, but uh, just the whole vibe. I don't know. Manly. Manly. You heard it here first. <laughs> Tyler's look is manly. <laughs> uh, and now I just wear a beard so I don't look like fat. Uh, Which, speaking of makeup, I have seen a meme. <laughs> You're going to kill me. That women have contour and men have beards. Well, I, I, How do you feel about I, that? I agree with that. Like, I don't know if I'd have a chin. I haven't seen my chin in, in 25 years. I have to spend an years. hour hiding my two chin. Yeah. <laughs> and you just grow it out. It's amazing. <laughs> Takes you a couple it's days. It's magic. Magical. Well, with that, uh, dear listener, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we've we've bored everyone and they've turned away. Uh, Jesse Brock. so. Where can they find more about us? We are Loose Framing Podcast. Stream us anywhere you listen to podcasts or watch us on YouTube. And don't forget to like us at Film Tampa Bay. And with that, we'll see you next time. Thank you.